Get some positivity going. Uh, you know, it's going to provide some positivity this morning. Brian and Paulo Alto. I'm he's, optimistic about that. He's ready to spit some positivity about the San Francisco 49ers coming in after the bye He's got to feel Jacksonville. me. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of I, coming I up know, short. I don't know who told you. Yeah, I'm not sure who told you I'm here to spit positivity on the 49ers. <laughs> in fact, I would say that I'm going to bring the opposite. Here's the thing. Here's the good part. Don't lose any sleep. Chasky. Um, I mean, look, and we're referencing like sort of old data, historical data that doesn't apply anymore. Look at what this secondary has done against Burrow and Cousins. Like, that's not a Super Bowl contender. I mean, and like, kudos to D'Amico for covering up the secondary, but man, they, they're bad, bad back half, bad in coverage. Like, there's nobody good in coverage in the back half outside of Ward, who's pretty grabby, but he can cover. Lenore can't cover. Oliver can't cover. Our safeties can't cover. So, like, let's not – I would say, Chasky, the whole thing has to be, you know, like the hypothesis was we don't need talent in the secondary because <laughs> I, we have a great front seven. Yeah. That's, colla- that's collapsing. That's collapsing now. Uh. They can't cover anybody. And, like, when the quarterback can get rid of the ball in two seconds and have guys chipping – and throw 30 for 39, yes. like Cousin said, or whatever it was. Like, I'm sorry. Like, yes, the defensive line needs to play better, but the b- bottom line is quarterbacks can take three steps yep. and have guys chipping and have guys wide open all over th- all over the field. Like, we're not going to the Super Bowl. Well, well and Brian, I'll let you finish. You know, Brian, like, Brian, I'll let you finish. Seahawks have three wide receivers. Whatever you people believe of Geno, fine. But they have three legit receivers. The Lions have three legit receivers. And clearly the yeah. Eagles have three legit receivers that they can do what you're talking about against our secondary. And that really, it's it's alarming. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how you, like, again, I don't know how you don't shore up that's, you know, you have to get another corner at the trade deadline. You have to. Like, or, or, you, or, well, it's, say, or it's just sort of an admittance to say, Hey, like, it's not in the car. And I'm okay if you want to say, hey, ain't in the cards with this group. We need to recalibrate. We need to build an actual secondary that can cover people. I, I'd well, be okay with that. <laughs> what like, about the pass I rush that you've start, invested over $100 million in? Yes, I, I get I get it. But the, here's the thing. I went back and looked. I went back and looked. And, like, it's not like quarterbacks are dropping back and have five seconds right. to, you know, go through five reads and they have six guys. No. Like, they are getting the ball rid of the ball so fast, and they're sh- it, it, with guys chipping, which basically takes guys out of the route or out of the route tree. Like that, you should not be able to throw for 390 yards on three step drops, and you know, like guys exactly. chipping. They they can't they can't cover anyone, anyone, right? Thanks no, for the positivity, BPA. Thanks for the positivity. I love you. Um. Look, I, I, the coverage is bad. <laughs> Traverse Wars, it's not been good. Isaiah Oliver in a slot. Let's see what Sammy Womack third is. His practice window is open. Luter. You're high on you're high on Sammy Womack. I, do, I was high I like on Sammy him. Womack. I like Luter Let's him. see what he does. Let's see what he does. Um, the pass rush, though. And the missed tackles. Missed tackles have been alarming. They've got over 32, 33 missed tackles the last three weeks. That hasn't helped. That's not a Steve Wilkes problem. That's a player problem. That's you not wrapping up, and that's you trying to tackle with your head down. You need to keep your head up, and you need to tackle, and you need to wrap up with two arms. Not try to – these woo heads that you're trying out there, 49ers, it's not working. You need to wrap up. These are big-time players you're playing against, especially this week. Travis Etienne will break your arm tackles. He will break through them, and he will run for a long, long way. And you better be wor- well, weary of him in the past game. I, I was going to say, I'm I'm really worried about Ridley busting out because he's been kind of quiet well, compared to what the preseason, so like the, the synergy in preseason for Jacksonville, if you follow fantasy at all, because Lawrence has been well, my quarterback. Dude, a lot and of, Ridley has, should be doing more. I think most of my teams have ETN, Trevor Lawrence. Some of them have Evan Ingram. How about Christian Somebody Kirk? have Christian Kirk. Yeah. I traded for Kirk. I tra- He's good. I traded Sam LaPorta for player. Christian Kirk because I had Dallas Goddard. Now Dallas Goddard's hurt, so don't get me started about that. But I needed a wide receiver. Christian Kirk is good. He is good. He's he's, he's a security blanket for uh, Trevor Lawrence. Very good offense. So, again, to me, it starts up front. When you want to talk about Super Bowl champions and you want to talk about Super Bowl winners, it all starts up front. What is this front four going to do? Here's Peter King on the Niners' run defense. 
I'd be very concerned because at the end of the day, no matter what anybody thinks of, you know, San Francisco's offense, you have to be on the field for that offense to be a factor. And you travel to Jacksonville and you play against Travis Etienne, who's one of the hottest backs in football. He's going to be fresher because he gets, he, he's going to be healthier after a bye week. And so this is a huge part of this game. And I dare say that I think stopping Travis Etienne is as important or more so uh, than stopping uh, uh, Trevor Lawrence because Etienne, the offense, has really gone through him the previous month before their bye. Travis Etienne, and I've seen him twice at Clemson. He took over the national championship game against Alabama, Alabama at Levi Stadium. I watched him at Glendale, Arizona in a Fiesta Bowl, break multiple tackles right in front of me to score a touchdown. This dude is tough, and he's a three-down back. And I remember when the Jaguars drafted him. They drafted him first pick of the second round, I believe. And people are like, hey, they need a running back because they had the other guy. Who's the other guy? James, James Robinson. Robinson. Travis I Etienne's better. I thought he was a first round, but you could be right. Keep going. Uh, I don't want to get caught in the weeds. Well, no, no. Travis Etienne. First, no, he was 25th pick there overall. There you go. Yeah, 25th pick two overall first rounders round. that year. Yep. And everyone yep. was like, why would you take a running back? Right. Like, well, did you see him James play with him? Well, yeah. 151 carries, 583 yeah, yards. And then you look at the receiving. 266 yards, yeah, he has 27 like. catches. This guy's a problem, a big-time problem. His little brother is going to be a baller, too, coming out of Florida. Yeah, he's not bad either. I like him. This guy, Different this, player, this, but really different, good. But this guy's good. and they, So they have weapons here. So the run defense is a problem. This is where Hargrave, Armstead, and do I say Javon Kinlaw? Chase Young. Chase Young gets a run. Where's Kinlaw? Mook Dog. Come on, baby. Let's go. Mook Dog is... <laughs> Come on. He's really a freak, though. Come on. No, he's not, though. He's really a freak, though. He's really like four string. <laughs> <laughs> Careful. He's listening. He's going to come after you now. Yeah, I I, I got love for Mook Dog. Let's go, Mook Dog. Let's go, Mook Dog. Uh, let's go to Mello in North Carolina. Mello, what's happening? What's up, Mello? What's up? Um, going off of what you were saying, Joe, I can't take another NFC title loss, man. I am tired of getting almost there and not getting there. And I'm going to spread some positivity this morning. I believe this is the year. Super Bowl window is closing. I believe this is the year. We have Brock Purdy has not been perfect. We have Debo Samuel. We have Chase Young. We have Nick Bosa. Why can't we do it this year? I, I, don't, I don't believe Philly is really better than us. That secondary looked horrible against Dallas. And if Dak Prescott can card them up, why can't Debo and Brock and Ayuk and McCaffrey and Juwan Jennings card them up? I'm not scared of Detroit. I'm not scared of Philly. I believe the defense will get it together. But this is the year because the Super, win Super Bowl window is closing, man. It's closing. We're not going to always have Fred Warner. We're not going to always have this regime. Trent Williams, he's about to retire soon. We have to get it done. I believe this is the year. I like that. I like your positivity right there. Is it the year for the 49ers? How big is this game on Sunday? You know, the next nine games, who's it bigger for, Bosa or Brock Purdy? Well, <laughs> I, I would I would also take a step further, and a part of me, I'm not worried that it's just getting this, but, like, I just know the position. Linebacker is a very difficult position to be elite at for a long period of time, and these two guys, Greenlaw and, and Warner, they throw their bodies around. The game is so physical. And so every year that you have those guys playing at a high level is a blessing. It could be gone tomorrow because, because the position is so physically taxing and demanding. And it's just I, I remember how quickly it evaporated with Bowman and Willis because of injuries and because of the physicality and everything like that. Like Keekley walked away right away. Very few guys play 12, 13 years at a high level like Erlacher and Ray Lewis did. It's just it's really hard. And so – you got to strike while you got these two. And if you lose one or both of these guys over the next year or two, you lose your identity defensively. And well, now you're trying is, to reshape it. Good thing is the Niners have drafted well at the linebacker spot. I would agree. I, I have confidence I in like them. Jalen Graham, you know, and I really I, like the other guy, D. Winners. D. Winners. You know, I, I think they're going to be fine there. I, again, it's all about up front. To me, it's all about it. always leads back to the defensive line. And it all starts with number 97, Nick Bosa. Nick Bosa. We need the cocaine bear, not the small bear. Are, are you surprised we're even having this much discussion regarding Bosa? 
like heading into this year. Everybody kept saying, oh, he's the last guy I worry about. He's the last guy I worry about. And he has been the first guy you and I have been worried about for what feels like five weeks. Well, coming off that postseason run where he didn't have a sack, he got shut down against the Dallas Cowboys. I Shut down. I told you I had never seen him get dropped to his knee more in that game than any other game I've seen him play. And Philadelphia wasn't much better. Lane Johnson no. had a groin injury. And kicked his no, butt. He kicked his ass. And then straight, the biggest impact play Bosa had all game was getting whapped by somebody on the sidelines. That's Tevin Coleman, I think. <laughs> Tevin Coleman. I remember I said to you, yeah. Bosa just got plowed. <laughs> yeah, I watched, yeah, it was, it was, <laughs> he just got plowed on the that, sidelines. That first half, don't even... Uh, so many things happened. Fred Warner got hurt on like the third play of the game. We thought he was done. He came they back. They should have thrown a challenge flag. I mean, Burford got hurt in that game. He was in a tent. And he was Josh watching. Johnson got crushed oh. like two elevator doors would crush an individual. What a nightmare that was. What a now now you're intensifying my migraine that I've had. This is by why the way. I don't want to lose again in the NFC Championship game. Well, I just want to get there and let me see what happens. I can't take I can't take another. Playoff loss. I just can't, I can't do you think, it. You can't? We all I'm can't. tired of falling short. We all are. So is Kyle Shanahan. Yeah, I know. So is Nick Bosa. So is Fred Warner. So is George Kittle. So is Debo Samuel. So is Brandon Ayuk. It's been since 1994 since we've hosted a, hoisted a Lombardi. All right? So I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it, too. I'm tired of it. 